Hello, it's uh, John Bowden here. I'm a singer. This is Toby, by the way. Hello, Toby. Um, I think he's a bit hungry, so he's going to be part of this video. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a singer and a fiddle player and a songwriter and uh, various bits and bobs. Um, so I thought I would talk uh, a little bit about evaluation, which is not a very rock and roll um, subject matter, I appreciate, but um, I think it's quite important and particularly, um, there's one particular aspect that I thought I'd talk about, which is how to evaluate your own ideas. Uh, I think pretty much all people who work in the creative industries, one, one thing that they have in common uh, is that they always have an ideas for things that they could do. Um, you know, it's it's just a kind of a constant stream, and if whether whether you're in a you know a tour bus or whatever, people saying, oh, oh we should definitely we should do this, or oh, why why don't we do this? Why don't we get together and do this? Oh, it'd be really good, to, you know. And I think that's that's really quite fundamental to being a uh, you know to working in the creative arts. I think because what you find very quickly when you sort of move into in, 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 into this industry is that it's very rare that people ask you to do something, you know, they, uh, occasionally it happens, someone will find up and say, oh, I've got this interesting project and we'd like you to, 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 you know, be the, you know, be, be, be in it or whatever. Or, I mean, I guess people ask you to join in with stuff, but in terms of like, you know, uh, people saying we want you to do your thing it's very rare you pretty much have to go this is the thing I want to do um, and then either do it and hope that someone pays attention or go around and say look I really want to do this thing um, how about getting on board anyway that I, I think it's quite an important thing but but so it follows therefore that it's quite important to be able to evaluate your own ideas because if you're having all these ideas going off of things that you could do um, how do you judge between them how do you decide what to actually focus on because it's it's very important to do that because otherwise you're just always constantly juggling things and never really committing to anything so you at some point you've got to kind of you know hone in on 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 something that you're gonna that you're gonna focus on and how do you go about doing that the reason i thought it would be worth talking about um is that one of the things you hear a lot is people saying oh you should never you should never worry about what the audience are going to think just do the thing that excites you most or the thing that you feel that that you need to do um you know there's there's a lot to be said for that i'm i'm sure but i it, my experience is that that is not necessarily um you know the best way of doing it i think quite often when you hear people saying that it's often people at the end of their career or you know are towards the end of their careers when they've already really established themselves and they've already got a big fan base and they they have that kind of freedom to go I'm just going to do whatever the hell I like and, uh, you know, and not really care how many people listen to it or, or whatever. Um, I'm thinking particularly actually of David Bowie, who uh, there's, a, there's quite a famous interview online where he talks about this. And I always, when I see that clip, I think, well, that's that's fine if you're David Bowie, age 45 in 1988 or wherever. Um, but when you look at Bowie back in, you know, the 60s and the 70s, he, he absolutely was focused on uh creating pop hits you know he was he was to some extent interested in how successful what he was doing was going to be and that's partly why he came up with all these incredibly um sort of iconic songs in the early part of his career i think because he was um part of his mind was 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 actually thinking about what the audience is going to get out of what what he's doing so that was the first thing i wanted to say is that i don't think there's any sort of shame in that you know having a kind of audience centric uh, aspect to your thinking is in my experience anyway quite important and, and and quite useful that doesn't mean that you should just do stuff that you think is going to be successful it's a, a balance between the two things what is it that you want to achieve creatively and uh, how likely is that to be useful to the audience i always think in terms of use um again it's not very rock and roll concept utility but um i i quite often if i'm trying to evaluate different 
wacky ideas for projects, I, I, I have to force myself to say, well, you know, who, who is this going to be useful for if I do an album of Howling Wolf covers on the concertina? Okay, that might be something that I'm very excited about doing for myself, but how many people are actually going to get any uh, real use out of that, you know, project? Um, answer, probably not that many. Um, and, you know, if I really, really want to do uh, an album of uh, Howling Wolf covers on the concertina, I would do it anyway, even though I know it's not going to be very useful. But if I'm a bit like, yeah, I mean, I'd quite like to do that, but, you know, there are other things I'd like to do as well, then I would at that point go, well, you know, it's not going to be much use to anyone, so maybe I'll do this other project, which I also really want to do, but I, I think it's going to be more useful for people. And when I say useful, I mean, um, how is it going to impact on people's lives? Uh, and it doesn't have to be a massive impact, but is it is it going to be something that people get a kind of benefit out of? Um, whether that be something that is an album that, that creates a particular mood. So is it an album that people are going to want to put on uh, to do the washing up to or, you know, for driving? Or is it going to be a kind of very emotional, sad album that that is going to be kind of cathartic for people? Um, you know, so that, that that's kind of what I mean by, by usefulness. Um, or even, I mean, one example also I was thinking about is there's a, a fairly recent... Um, recording uh, by composer uh, Max Richter, uh, compo composer and broadcaster Max Richter, called Sleep, uh, which I think is a, something like a nine-hour piece um, of music that is designed to be slept through, which is quite an you know, interesting concept, and it's almost like... Um, I think, I don't know, I thought it was quite a brave thing for a composer to do, to say this is, you know, my, this is music that I have deliberately designed for, for going to sleep to. And um, and it's it's great, and I, I listen to it quite a lot, you know, to go to sleep to, because it's very good music, it's very sort of sensitively and carefully put together, but it's also uh, very well designed for sleeping to. And I, so for me, that's that's a great example of something that's very useful um, to the world. Um, so uh, yeah, I just thought I thought, thought it was a good example to throw in there. Um, so in terms of evaluation, I think what one point one point of it is how do you you know balancing what you want to do with a sense of what might be useful uh, to the world. Uh, I think is is a pretty good way of going about it. When you're thinking about what's useful, though, I think you don't necessarily need to think quantitatively. Quantitatively, um, you know, it doesn't need to be the case that you, you know, that that project needs to reach thousands and thousands of people to to be useful. Um, and so, I just kind of wanted to finish off with with a with a thing that I always come back to, which is um, how many people will so if i'm thinking of an album or something um I, I always think you know what is the chance that one person in the whole world it, this is going to be their favorite album out of all albums it, you know what is the probability of that occurring and um you know it doesn't in a way it doesn't sound like a big thing one person but on the other hand it's a massive thing for someone you know for, for, for something to be some somebody's favorite album um and so i guess i kind of think if one person uh thinks that this album is the best out al their favorite album it's the one that they keep going back to then actually that to me uh has as much utility to the world as maybe ten thousand people quite liking your album you know uh and finding it finding it quite quite good and quite enjoying it and putting it on now and then you know but if there's one person who who absolutely loves it so i think that that's the sort of counterbalance to that kind of utilitarian uh approach um so yeah that was that was kind of what i was thinking of sharing was just that that idea of having a, a bit of a kind of a scale going on in your head when you're when you're focusing on what the most sort of important project is uh out of all these kind of different ideas that you might have going on and try and balance what you want to do, what you want to achieve creatively with a sense of how that is going to 
go out into the world and have a positive impact. Uh, kind of sounds pretty obvious and basic now I've said it, but anyway, hopefully that's of some use to someone. Okay, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.